Hi, this is The Greatest Story Ever Played. I'm Dan. I'm Jordan. And today we're going to be talking about Life is Strange Before the Storm, Episode 2, Brave New World. And as a warning, this review is spoiler-filled, uh, both for Before the Storm thus far and the original Life is Strange game as well. Jordan's got a description of this episode for us. Yeah, so the description is, As Chloe and Rachel's family life continues to crumble, their friendship blossoms and the two girls discuss running away together. But before they can go, Chloe gets involved with an errand for Frank Bowers, which puts her in a dangerous situation and exposes an uglier side to Arcadia Bay. A journal entry that actually uh, opens up this episode is noteworthy. So, it <laughs> says, Max, when did you decide you were done with me? I mean, how did you know it was time to move on? I ask because Rachel and I, Rachel and I have decided we're done with this shit town. We've had it. It's bye-bye Bay. But instead of ghosting it, like someone I know, <laughs> we're going to leave a trail of destruction in our wake. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, more more sad Max and Chloe journal references. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't... I miss this, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if we looked at it uh, when yeah. we played, actually. I went and looked back over it before I, like, wrote some notes and was like, oh, no. It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rough. Uh, sad. Yeah, sad. From there, we end up picking up the game at school with Principal Wells because we, us and Rachel Amber and her parents, got called in because we skipped school Mm -hmm. uh, the day before and the episode before. Yeah. So this is our first big decision where Principal Wells is basically reaming us. He's kind of, kind of reaming Rachel Amber, but not really. But he's mostly just going in. On Chloe, which is us, and, and our mom, kind of. Right. So, basically, at some point, Rachel takes the blame for everything. She's like, I was having a rough day. I, m- I basically made Chloe come with me. She chose to come because she wouldn't be by myself because I was having a rough day and like seemed like it would be dangerous. It's like, okay, seems reasonable. So the choice here is you can either, I guess, let Rachel take the blame, or you can say she's lying. It's all my fault. So we ended up going along with Rachel's story, which is 25% of the people. So 75% of the people didn't let Rachel do that and, and kind of took the blame. Which I was... I'm kind of surprised by. I'm surprised it's that extreme of a, a gap there. Yeah, I, I thought it would probably be more 50-50, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I guess... So my rationale with this was she already decided to do this. And clearly the consequences for us were going to be way higher than for her. Um... I don't know. Yeah, and she seemed pretty adamant in how she was describing things that she was okay with taking the blame. So part of me felt like, okay, well, now if we say that, no, it was actually our fault that we're saying she's been lying, it's like, I feel like then you still get her in trouble too anyway. It's kind of a weird... I feel like you you only had the option to go along with it at this point. Yeah. Well, because at this point too, Rachel had gotten suspended from the play, right? No. Not yet? No. Okay. So we weren't sure... Oh. Mm. Okay, well, there's almost two decisions here. The first one, Rachel starts saying, like, oh, this is my fault. And you can kind of cut in after that and be like, no, she's lying. Right. And I think at the, at, the, at the very end of all of this. Rachel's been suspended from the play, yeah. and then you have an option to... Yeah, Principal Wells is like, is there anything else you want to add to this, Chloe? And you can choose to, like, be like, no, that's all bullshit. Or you can be like, no, I have nothing to add. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so that made it a little bit harder, and maybe that's why more people took the blame is mm-hmm. we didn't they didn't want her to be suspended. Uh, Which but, I think we had we had some trouble on this one. Yeah, it definitely wasn't an easy yeah no, decision. Sure, but, but it kind of I was like I don't know should we just follow Rachel's lead? So it seemed like seemed to make sense, but her getting suspended definitely was shitty. And the, I guess the shittiest thing about this is we still got suspended for the rest of the year. So part of me is like, we should have just fucking taken the blame in the first place because right. that would have been the same punishment. Yeah. Probably. You get, uh, I, I went and looked. You get expelled if you take uh, the blame. So it is worse. I don't, but I think Maybe. Rachel might still get kicked out of the play still. She might still be suspended from the play either way. Just uh, you get expelled also <laughs> versus suspended for the year, which uh, same, same difference. Same thing, basically. Almost, yeah. but... Yeah, for... for uh, for this, uh, Chris on Twitter wrote in. He said, I took the blame in the office in the best episode ever. And in response, Jenny said, on Twitter, said, me too. And then heart's face. <laughs> and yeah. then crying, laughing face. Yeah. Because uh, 
Chloe's rant is crazy when you take the blame. Like, oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. She just is like, fuck you, fuck that. Like, you know, just talks a lot of shit. Hell yeah. Typical Chloe. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, then Allie on Twitter said, I did, of course. So she also took the blame. And then uh, Chris on Twitter said, Chloe took the blame in grand fashion. So Yeah, so most people <laughs> except us did this. <laughs> yeah, so they, they're all definitely in the majority, all taking the blame and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could I could see that. I guess Chloe's an interesting spot. Chloe in the main game would definitely take the blame, because main game Chloe like, yeah. doesn't give a fuck. She's like full yeah. of confidence at that point. Mm-hmm. This Chloe, I think, it could go either way. It makes sense that like I could see her not like she's kind of more uh, reserved at points, and I could see her just following Rachel's lead like we did. But yeah. I could also see Chloe being you know rebellious and fighting yeah. it too. So I don't know. It's kind of funny. She could definitely go both ways. And yeah. would probably fit in her character right now. Yeah, at this point, too. Not that her life is, like, totally fucked. Like, in the original game with Max. But but here, it's it's still... You know, her getting expelled would be probably a big deal to her. Kind of. Yeah. But if this happened, you know, whatever, two years into the original game, she'd probably be like, I don't... Whatever. Right. You know, so that's probably also a factor. So that happens, and we... Um, we get the graffiti scene. Yeah. So then we get this graffiti scene. We're getting kicked out of school. We have to clear out our locker or whatever. We do that. And then we go into the bathroom, and we just graffiti. Everything. It's a cut scene, and Chloe just graffitis the whole bathroom. And this is really cool. They've got, like, a good song going. It's really good. Like, again, with their intros for these games, they're awesome. Yep. And this one, again, was really great. And she even wrote different quotes, like, you know, uh, about each one, like Max. <laughs> something about Max, something about David. Mm-hmm. Just different things about everyone. And yeah. A giant middle finger on the ground. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was cool. <laughs> it, it was good. It was like perfect Chloe um, and a good yeah, good scene. Mm-hmm. After this, you go outside to meet up with Joyce and David uh, to go home after being suspended. So in the parking lot, they're waiting for you, and David starts basically confronting you. Yeah. After you agree to move on, and Joyce is like, you guys need to work together to be a family for me. And we're mm-hmm. like, all right, fine. Because you're definitely feeling for Joyce at this point. Um, for sure. Because, you know, having to go to the school and see your kid get expelled and all that other shit. So we agree to that. And then David just goes, like, full douchebag. Yeah, he sucks. Just, like, confronts you a bunch. Talks about how, like, you need discipline in your life and you need a father figure again. Mm-hmm. And all this crap. And so then he tells you you need to empty out your pockets, put everything on the car, car the hood's car, car mm. hood. Yeah, hood's car. Yeah. <laughs> hood's car. Uh, car hood. And prove that you don't have any drugs on you because <laughs> that needs done. So we're given the option to either agree to his request or refuse it. Earlier in the episode, Justin had stolen <laughs> our bonus joint or whatever uh, sure, yeah. in our locker. So we knew that we didn't have anything on us. Mm-hmm. And I think we wanted to appeal to Joyce that we're willing to be flexible and that he's the asshole. Yep. So we chose to empty our pockets. 62% of people did that. Uh, 38% of people did not. Yeah, it seemed like the right thing to do. I I've, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I just felt like we should do right by Joyce was how I felt, mostly. Yeah, yeah I, I agree totally. I mean, it's so hard because, okay, on one hand, Joyce... Like, really wants us and David to interact, like, well. On the other hand, David sucks dick. So it's, like, really hard to know. Okay, we want to appease Joyce, but David just, just sucks. Right. It's really hard to, I guess, balance those two things. So I think I think both of us probably are more like, all right, unless David's being totally crazy, let's just, just kind of go with it. Just If Joyce is around specifically. Oh, and I think where it makes it hard is that, like, you feel like you're going to, you're getting shit from Joyce, mm. but you don't ever see her give shit to David. Like, maybe they do. Maybe it's off screen where mm. she also confronts David. Like, that was mean that you did that. Mm-hmm. But we never see it, so it's definitely easy to yeah. feel like it's you're getting ganged up on. And mm-hmm. Well, there's I, some I, of that in this where D- Joyce was starting to get like, kind of pissed at David. Um, about Especially after she realized we had no drugs on us. She thinks she felt really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Chris on Twitter, he said, I emptied them. Tool or no tool, I knew David's intentions. So, I think yeah. just, yeah, trying to make this right, I guess. Yeah, which, yeah. Um, also a Chris on Twitter, but a different Chris. Chris spelled C-H-R-I-S. Um, he said, I emptied them. Chloe had, noth- had nothing to hide, and I knew it would make David look like a douche. 
Yeah, that's part of why I think we did it too. And just to not piss Joyce off. Like Right. Yep, I agree. Dave looked like a giant douchebag. Mm-hmm. After this, we end up going to the junkyard, and uh, we end up finding what uh, becomes Chloe's truck. Yeah. Uh, which this was fun. So mm-hmm. she sees it, and she starts kind of trying to work on it. You get to decorate it. You know, like we found a pirate flag and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. And that was good. I, I don't know. That was like a fun little side thing. Explore the junkyard a little bit more. Mm-hmm. See the truck that will be the truck later. That was fun. After this, uh, Frank meets us up, meets us at uh, the junkyard. Mm-hmm. Because he has a mission for us, that we need to break into Drew's room and mm-hmm. steal drug money. Because Drew works for Damon, who Frank seemingly also works for. I think Damon's his brother. Or no, it's his, one of his friends. Yeah. And maybe they work together selling drugs. Yeah, I don't think he works for him. I, I think they're friends and maybe both kind of do stuff. Okay, yeah. Something like that. But Frank somehow is wrapped up in Damon's drug thing to have Chloe help him out. So... So Chloe's mission is to break into Drew's dorm room and find a thousand dollars that is owed to Damon. No, I think it's so. I, I think he owes Frank that money. He, he also owes Damon that money. I think it was. I don't think so. Really? I mean, maybe not. I might be wrong, but I think that huh. it's Damon's money. Okay. Either way, and Frank was trying to get it also. Okay. Okay, that and makes sense. Maybe, uh, based on what's coming up, maybe Frank was trying to have it not get so escalated. Yeah. <laughs> that could be. Maybe could he was be. trying to solve it before it got bad. Makes sense. Okay. I could see right. that since Frank, like, seems all right. Like, they, like, He's... saved us from those guys mm-hmm. in the first episode. The skeevy guys. Mm-hmm. He, like, ran them off. So, I don't know. I mean, skeevy guys, yeah. 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 I mean, we know, the, we know other things about Frank later, but, like... He hasn't seemed all bad. Yeah, he's not all bad. He's a drug dealer. Uh, you know, there's that whole thing. And the debate we had uh, in other episodes before, but mm-hmm. not all bad, but also probably not all good. I could see him not wanting to see someone get fucked up by Damon. Yeah, that would, especially if he could just get the money real quick. Yeah, if he could solve it. Mm-hmm. So with that, we then go into Drew's room. We roam around a bit. We realize that Mikey lives with Drew and that they're brothers. Mm-hmm. And that their dad did work for the Prescotts at, like, the dock, like a fishing dock or something like that. Or something. And he got laid off and now doesn't have money. That's why Mikey's staying with Drew, actually, Mm -hmm. um, because they both are there. And... You think he's homeless, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he had all those different addresses for where he was staying at. Mm -hmm. And so we find that out. We end up stealing the money and finding out. And... (laughs) <laughs> then Mikey walks in right after we've pocketed the money and he's like what are you doing here and we're like uh looking for Drew yeah and then Drew walks in and he's like what are you doing here yeah but he doesn't, he doesn't and then really we're care. like uh and then we hear someone yelling mm-hmm. at Drew and he shuts the door and says stay inside no matter what don't open up mm-hmm. and we find out that it's Damon we hear we realize it's Damon mm-hmm. Drew's outside saying Damon I don't have the money for you but I will get it yeah and then basically Damon kind of starts to rough him up a little bit, and then we, we have the choice, because we hear it happening. We have the choice, we can either take the money that we've stolen from Drew and give it to Damon, or we can stay in the room with Mikey and like kind of hold him back and comfort him as shit goes down. Right. So we actually stayed with Mikey, which was 67%. So 33% of people just ended the whole thing and gave Damon the money. So if you do stay with Mikey... Damon ends up, like, really messing up Drew. And then I think he breaks his leg or his knee. Right, because at first he's, like, just beating him up. Like, you or can like hear he, him getting punched. He might, like, punch him a couple times. But it's like, not. Nah, it's like, ah, uh, all right. When after we don't go out, then Damon, like, stomps on his knee. Yeah. And Drew's a football player and is good. We saw he has, like, a college scholarship offer. It's, like, like a pretty, I think, like, a D1 school. Right. Yeah. So. That pretty felt, bad. Yeah, yeah, that felt bad when I mean, we heard just, his knee crunch. Yeah, I should have just given him the money. Yeah, I wonder if we should have I kind of not. regretted not doing this. It seemed right to do with Mikey 1 because Drew wanted us to. And I, I didn't think it was going to get that bad. But it did. <laughs> so. Yeah, because Drew told us to stay with Mikey, I felt better about that. Like mm-hmm. He felt like it was important. And even afterwards, he was like, thanks for doing that. Yeah. Thanks for staying with Mikey. I'm glad you did that. And then we give him the money back that we had. Yeah, which I was surprised he wasn't which, pissed at all. Which we could have not 
Yeah, we had the option to keep it. Which is funny that that's actually not one of the main decisions. Yeah. That seems like that should have been a main decision right after this. Instead, that was like a minor decision. Yeah, I guess it'd be too... Maybe it's weird to have two main decisions back to back, but... Because mm -hmm. we could have stolen it still, but we gave it back. That would <laughs> suck if... That would just suck. His knee's broken and Damon gets the money anyway. Right. Like, uh. Yeah, I, yeah. so I don't know if his knee will get stomped either way. Maybe it does. Yeah. But... This would have been one where maybe if we had Max's rewind, we w I would have done it. Yeah, Cause see what happens. I, yeah, because seeing his knee get stomped, maybe I'd Pretty, Could have ruined his life. Yeah, maybe he won't play college football now or something, so. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I would have rewound then. I'm not sure. I since might have. Yeah, since he was happy with it, that kind of makes it hard. Like, mm. he was glad that we didn't, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Chris on Twitter, though, says, I kind of gave the money to Damon so he wouldn't hurt Drew the first time. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Stig Weird on Twitter says, I uh, gave it back to the insane drug dealer with the temper problem. Drew had a football scholarship that could have been lost with a bad injury. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of the, the thing that I, I guess, kind of hangs me up on this decision. Like, eh, maybe we should have given it back. Yeah. Uh, then Chris on Twitter says, I handed it over to Drew. His family obviously needed it more. So he didn't. He kept it and then didn't steal it. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, same for so us. I, yeah, I don't think I could have stayed out of the fight with Damon and kept the money. Like, that seems mean, too, if we left oh, this episode up, and yeah. we just have a thousand bucks or whatever. Well, and I guess we don't get to keep it. We'd have to give Frank. Mm -hmm. Then Damon gets it anyway. Yeah, Damon would get it anyway. Which, fuck that guy. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, fuck him. Yep. Uh, after this, we end up at the Tempest play. Chloe gets roped into it um, because the uh, person, Juliet, I think, who was supposed to be in it, is delayed by the fire yep. that we caused. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm surprised this doesn't come up more. The yeah, fire. right. Yeah, it's like we'll get like those uh, alerts on our phone, basically. Uh, yeah. And maybe hear like a thing on the radio, but mm -hmm. it hasn't come up a lot. This is the first time someone was prevented from it. So yeah. that happens. We talk to Rachel, and she tricks Victoria. Uh, we end up drugging Victoria to uh, not have her pass out and not be able to perform in the play. Mm -hmm. So then we're both in the play going through the tempest i i really like this scene I think yeah it was pretty good really fun yeah it was fun going through it doing the doing the lines and then rachel goes off script and says lines that she wasn't supposed to but just basically like professes love and friendship and stuff to chloe wait a little bit longer and then you know we'll take on the world basically mm -hmm. corners of the earth are mere prologue like that yep. kind of thing and it, it's really nice it's it's a really great moment <laughs> mm -hmm. in, in the game and chloe we did the lines right, so Chloe doesn't bomb. She does a good job. That's nice. Yeah, you, you took the controller at this point. Like, I know what to do here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was good, too. And uh, it was, it, yeah, it was it was fun. Way more fun than I thought playing a play instead of video game would be. <laughs> yeah. But instead, I think it's great. Um, after this, we are walking around Rachel Amber's neighborhood and celebrating the play going well. Rachel's ecstatic. She, like, really, really loved it and, you know, loves that feeling of after a play and mm -hmm. feels awesome. And we're pretty excited that we actually, like, did well at something that we wouldn't want to do <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. That's pretty positive. And then, you know, talking about how we could take on the whole world. And Rachel's like, you know, what I said in the play was serious. Like, the world is ours for the taking. And, like, I want to leave Arcadia Bay with you. And so then... We are like, hold up. Uh, don't just tell me you want to do this and then have it not happen. That's just going to make me feel worse about my life. Mm -hmm. I want this to really happen. And Rachel's like, I'm serious. I'm really serious. Uh, what would it take to convince you that I'm serious? So then we're given the option of what to do. And uh, the options that come up are asking Rachel for a kiss asking Rachel to get a tattoo with you or asking Rachel to give her bracelet to you which was um, from her dad I think from the time that she got hurt that she told us about in episode one where she hurt her arm or whatever and her dad gave her that bracelet then and she's worn it since she was like 10 or mm -hmm. something so it's pretty meaningful mm -hmm. and for us actually we didn't even get the kiss option Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I guess we friend zoned Rachel too much in episode one which sucks. I didn't even know you could not have this as an option. <laughs> I feel like we only had that one... There's the big interaction. Yeah, I thought that was... I think there's, like, times that you can, like, flirt more on... Uh, 
like the train and other points when you're talking. Mm-hmm. I think it can be more flirty and more friendy. And I think we must have chose all friend ones <laughs> for some reason. Oops. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which I, yeah, I didn't know this could happen because when I've played the first time, kiss was an option. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, this time it was, you have two choices. And I was like, when we were playing, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Both were kind of like, eh. Yeah, so this was kind of disappointing. We chose uh, the bracelet because that seemed more meaningful than a tattoo. Mm, yeah. Definitely would have chose the kiss for me this time playing. Specifically, I think going through the play, that was you know pretty emotional scene for them and stuff. But mm-hmm. then also, last time we found out if we would have said more than friends to Rachel, that she was actually pretty responsive to that, mm-hmm. which I didn't know was the case. And because she was more receptive, then I definitely would have been more forward Mm -hmm. (laughs) retrospectively so yeah that's where we ended up the first time i played i didn't go for the kiss but i didn't know that either then so i did the bracelet because i was like well a kiss like we'll probably do that anyway the bracelet it's like a thing that you really care about so if you'll give it to me then we really probably will leave arcadia bay yeah that was kind of my thought so yeah that makes sense most everyone did choose kiss 71 percent of people did that 14 did tattoo and 15 did bracelet so I'd feel unfortunate that we got 30% of what people chose as our choices. Yeah. We, we kind of, we butchered that. I guess we probably should have been more romantic with Rachel previously. I thought we, there was one interaction right before this too where you have an option to say something like sweet or something like, I don't know, silly. Like funny, yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny. Like and we, we chose, did, yeah, we speak, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I thought with that that yeah. we were going to get the kiss option. So yeah. when it didn't come, I was pretty surprised. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, so, yeah. Got screwed. Well, yeah, screwed ourselves. Got, yeah, screwed ourselves. We accidentally friend zoned ourselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> bad luck. Uh, Chris on Twitter says, "What do you think I did?" And then he had a GIF of Rachel and Chloe kissing. <laughs> In response to this, uh, Rowan on Twitter said, "The only real answer to this question." Yeah, okay. And Beth on Twitter said, "That's rhetorical, right?" <laughs> <laughs> Wolf on Twitter says, "Was there even a choice?" And then Chris, again, another Chris on Twitter says, do you really need to ask? So clearly the majority are like, why would you not do that? Yeah, everyone did it. Fair. Would have done it if we had the choice too. Mm. We we just fucked ourselves earlier. So, um, (laughs) yeah, uh, yeah, it definitely makes sense. Would have gone for it for sure. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'll say this now. It makes sense. I could say at the end, but I feel like I definitely, playing this the second time through, I definitely could see how much more... Chloe would like Rachel, like how how she would be into her as a friend, attracted to her as a potential girlfriend, like all of that. I see that a lot more this time mm-hmm. than the first time I played. I think I was so Team Max yeah. that I don't think I could see good things about Rachel as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think I played it a little softer the first time I played, but this time I definitely see it more mm-hmm. and can see how Chloe would be way more into that too. Yeah, how... um. Did you read through all the journal entries and texts for Max on your first playthrough of this? Um, no, probably not. Yeah, I feel like that probably also helps you like Rachel more too because it just almost makes it like impossible to not want whatever Chloe wants in this or right. You know, like be totally like make her happy. You know. Yeah, that's true. Because you definitely, I, I definitely feel Chloe being alone a lot more the second time. Yeah. The first time, I think I was just like, more Chloe, I'm really excited and happy about that because I liked the first game so much. Mm-hmm. And so I was just happy to be in the Bay. But this one, I feel like I have identified with Chloe more. Mm-hmm. And even with us playing them basically straight through, like back to back almost going through this, it's like, yeah. we've just been in Arcadia Bay for a while <laughs> yep. with these characters and we know Chloe's story and life and stuff like that. And so mm-hmm. like, I, anything that can make her and Joyce's life better, I generally want now, like mm-hmm. way more. Yep. For sure. Yeah. After this, you end up having an awkward dinner at the Amber household. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Really weird. Chloe has lots of awkward interactions with Rachel Amber's mom. Kind of her fault. Yeah, that are her fault. She's just being weird. Like, Rachel Amber's mom is really cool. Yeah. And nice. Um, But we're just super awkward. Really bad jokes all the time. Yeah, bad jokes that are awkward. Like, yeah. So, Chloe's awkward jokes continue. Um, It's a little weird. Mm -hmm. Then, at dinner, uh, you can see that Rachel's, like, seething Mm -hmm. at this point. Um, because she wants to confront her dad, and her dad's talking about basically being like an all-American family. Like, yeah. we have no problems, and we're the best, and I'm the DA, and yeah. all this stuff. And 
there's a point where Rachel erupts um, and says, we saw you kissing another woman, like mm-hmm. you're, you're a bad man, basically, kind of thing. And then he tries to act like, oh, you, what, what you think you saw, and like, he's being a douchebag. Mm-hmm. Rachel shatters the glass table with like the salad bowl. She like, yeah, throws just, it through it. Yeah, I mean, it's a big table too. Yeah, this is like a big dining room Eight table. Eight person table. Right. And he says that's her mom, her real mom. Yeah, she like screams at him for a while and then he's like, that was your mom. <laughs> that was your, yeah, your real mom. Yeah. But it's not, I'm not just, I'm not having an affair. Yeah. Or something like that. And then the episode ends. <laughs> yeah. Which I, yeah. Crazy ending. So that was pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Um, very uh, different domestic dispute, I guess, that you wasn't sure how that would go mm-hmm. for Rachel, you know, like, her, and her dad and what was going on. Yeah. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that was one of the more intense uh, probably scenes in any game. Either game, I guess. Not any. Either game. And Rachel's kind of crazy sometimes, for sure. Like, you could just tell she was, like... Cause there's a couple points where, what, you like, you see, like, Chloe, her, uh, Rachel, and Rachel's mom and dad arguing, and Rachel's kind of sitting there, like, staring at the ground. And you come and say, like, oh, she's just about to, like, explode. And then she does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess she successfully, the past two games, ended with a crazy freakout. Burning yep. down the forest and then shattering the table and, like, screaming. And she's obviously intense. Yeah. As a person. Like, she's... I'm into it. All over. Yeah. Um... Yeah, she's she's really something of a character. Like straight A student, but then you like drug Victoria to get what you want, or yeah, are really like friendly and charming and really pull. I mean, like you really feel the pull of her. How like cool it is being friends with her. Mm-hmm. You definitely really see that. But then you know that you'd uh, run around with like Frank or Mister Jefferson yeah. behind Chloe's back. Yep, it's kind of like, strange. Yeah, she's she's kind of all over and. It's weird. It makes her really polarizing for me. Like, mm-hmm. I go back and forth on how much I like her. Because yeah. on one hand, I really like her for Chloe, that she has someone and things like that. But then on the other hand, I'm like, I really don't like these bad parts about you. And, like, if you hurt Chloe, that makes me mad. Yeah, so, makes uh, pissed, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, uh, she's kind of, she's complex in that way. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I don't know. I mean, she's definitely a super intriguing character. But yeah. I, I definitely can feel polarized her on her at points because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and especially, as, so assuming that you'd take all the dialogue options throughout this this whole game and make Chloe and Rachel dating or whatever that would be in this scenario. What we find out in the original game is that Rachel was, like, messing around with Frank, and I don't know if she was messing around with Mr. Jefferson. I don't think they really said that. Uh, Did when they? Jefferson was talking to Max in the dark room, Yeah. he talked about Rachel Amber with her for a little while. Did he, uh, but was she, like, sleeping with him? I don't think they really. It, I don't remember if they insinuated that or not. It seemed like she was a willing photography participant, so I'm guessing. Ah, you're right. Because he didn't hurt her. Yeah. So. You're right. So yeah, that, and then you got her mess around, like sleeping with Frank for sure. Right. And if she's like dating Chloe, it's like ah. You're not that good of a friend. Granted, neither is Max, but like. Right. Max right. becomes a good friend again. So part of it, yeah, you're right. So that's uh, that kind of makes it hard. But I mean, at the same time though, like maybe you know, because also we just met Rachel, right? So at the first game, true, we'd met Rachel that day basically that we started talking to her. Yeah. At the firewalk show. Yep. Or whatever, and so and this is probably one, two, maybe three days later. Like it's very, which is crazy, <laughs> very close to the firewalk, and so our relationship's true. gotten like intense quicker, like. It's been pretty fun and emotional and, like, things like that. And that's awesome. That's really great. Mm-hmm. And maybe this happens and then it's, like, they just become best friends after this. Yeah. Maybe it's, we don't date each other either, but, you know, like, we're just best friends. Because, obviously, Chloe cares plenty about her in the main game mm-hmm. as she's wanting to find her and everything like that. So, yeah. it's not, like, so, I don't know. It, yeah, it's complicated. Because mm-hmm. uh, I feel both ways about it and sometimes strongly yep. on each one and so uh, i don't know it's mm-hmm. it's something <laughs> yeah very interesting yeah but i guess for some general thoughts on the game or the episode i feel bad for joyce we talked about that a little bit and yep. fuck david yep. um it, it, it's just a lot harder like 
There's points where David seems reasonable, but mm-hmm. it's like 10% of the time. Yep. And then... And he's not, he's... Like the 90% of the time, he fucking sucks. Yeah, completely. He's just terrible. And I I don't know. It made me just want to do right by Joyce as much as I can. Even if Chloe might rebel and be an asshole mm-hmm. in those situations, like, I just can't. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel too bad for you to do this to you. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't... I think to a certain extent, Chloe will and would rebel. But I, I don't... She seems pretty into, like, trying to make Joyce happy. I think she'll get in moods where she's, like, super pissed and, like, just, it's like, fuck all this. But I think objectively she's, like, pretty into making sure Joyce is okay. I think, yeah, I think she really does care about her mom. She's difficult yeah. and rebellious at times or whatever, but, she, yeah. yeah, she definitely cares about her mom. So it's, it's kind of hard to choose sometimes because there's for sure times, like, I don't, I wonder if Chloe wouldn't, like, real life Chloe, she probably would not have emptied her pockets. Yeah, I don't think so either. So part of me was like, ah, maybe we shouldn't, but we have nothing to hide, so, yeah. Right. You and know, why not? I, maybe real Chloe would in that situation. Yeah, just to well, make him look like a douchebag. Yeah. yeah. Or real Chloe would be like, fuck you, I'm not doing it, because, like, these are my pockets, I'll choose when I want to empty them. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yep, David sucks. That was one of my thoughts, too, was... Yeah. I feel like there's certain time, like, there's certain bigger things, like the end of the first game where he saves us. Right. He seemed cool then. And especially when we tell him Chloe's dead, he, like, freaks out and just like, okay, you actually cared. But you see stuff like this, you're like, no, you don't. You fucking bitch. You don't care about anything. Except maybe Joyce. Probably Joyce. Right. Just, yeah, he sucks. Yeah, he's shitty. Yeah. One, one thing I like a lot is, so for all the confusion, I guess, on what I think about Rachel, I think generally I like her. And I love... Like, Chloe and her, their friendship, their relationship, whatever you want to call it. Like, that that just makes it, like, knowing that she disappears at some point makes it way, like, way harder. Like, if I think if I played back through the original game now, I would feel way more intensely like, oh, man, Chloe, it sucks, Rachel's gone. You know, because, like, my first playthrough of it, I didn't know the backstory and stuff. It's kind of like, oh, your friend's gone. Like, it's been, like, a year or whatever. Not that you should just get over it. But, like, Max is back. You should be happy. But after seeing all this interaction, it's like, oh, man, <laughs> I feel like a douche for even thinking that, you know? Yeah, knowing Rachel makes her being m- missing later a yeah. lot harder. Yeah, for sure. Especially with all them, all the talk about them leaving together and going to, like, California or whatever. There's a couple times in the original game where you'll be talking with Chloe or Chloe's talking with somebody else about Rachel maybe just left and went to California by herself. And Chloe gets pissed. She's like, she would never do that without me. So it's interesting. Now you kind of see why she's so confident. Because part of me was like, oh, maybe she did, like, whatever. But yeah, it seems like she probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. It's just way more intense. Yeah. It's like, ugh, jeez. Mm-hmm. The first game was definitely harder this time around playing after I'd played this when we played it for the first time. Uh, I was just like, oh, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I bet. All the, all the, like, missing posters and all those things all just felt way worse. <laughs> yep, I'm sure. Yeah. It would probably suck now if I went back through and played it. Right. After actually playing this episode for the first time, I went and actually got the Shakespeare play, <laughs> The Tempest, to read it, because uh, I was interested. And it actually was... Uh, fair, I mean, we only saw 10 minutes of the play or something. Yeah, I was pretty confused it, about what was happening. It was pretty short, but um, what it is is that Rachel is playing a character named Prospera, who's mm-hmm. on an island with her daughter, who was whoever was asleep um, on the stage with them. I, for, ah. I forget who, what that character's name is right now. Dana, maybe, but... Um, and then Chloe is playing a spirit named Ariel who works, who's like Prospera's slave slash spirit or whatever, who causes things. And so she causes a shipwreck that ends up bringing someone to the island and stuff like that. But, okay. um, yeah, but I ended up reading the play afterwards, uh, which is crazy that a video game got me to read a play. And it's especially a really old play. Yeah. Reading a Shakespeare play. I'd never read any Shakespeare before actually. So, you know to get that jump and then i actually watched a movie of it too um <laughs> my god <laughs> yeah so it like pulled me in i got pretty interested that's cool good and i i don't know if i think this or not but i think that yeah i think that uh the tempest scene might be one of the best scenes in either game actually like the dialogue was fun but just that moment between chloe and rachel mm-hmm. was really big and I, I don't know if it is for sure but I think it's probably top five for best scenes in either game. Um, mm. It was a pretty big moment. Yeah, it's fair. It's got to be. It's got to be. I'd say probably top three. I can't. 
I can't think of a scene specifically between like Chloe and Max or Chloe and Rachel that would be better than that one. I'm sure there's some from the first game I'm just blanking on. Maybe, oh fuck, maybe the scene where Max is like basically telling Chloe how she like went, saved William from dying. Oh and yeah. And then like that could be, that could be up there because that was intense for different reasons. Like yeah. that was way sadder and like more fucked up. This one's happy and like emotional, good emotional. That That's probably up there. Yeah, that yeah, that's true. I guess probably a lot of other ones are probably a lot more sad. Yeah. <laughs> when, I guess when we um when we finish farewell, once we finish the last episode, once we're done with like Arcadia Bay, maybe we'll have to rank like top five scenes or something. That'd be cool. That could be a fun add on. But yeah, I guess one one other scene I thought thought of. This isn't really an interaction, but so if you choose to sacrifice Chloe, that in game scene in game scene is like. That's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. That an, could be up there too. Yeah, that probably. Yeah, would have to be so one. painful. Yeah, that one's. Oh. Yeah. Rough. Yeah. But yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Good question. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to debate that out and hear what people say. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Getting some healthy debate. Exactly. Yeah, um, one thing I was thinking about. I think we talked about this last week after we played the episode. But how long? So. They, let's say they've been friends for how long do you think right now like i'm thinking a couple three days to, three to five days max yeah probably how long do you think they're friends before she goes missing because or i guess the first question is what's the time gap between now and when max comes back year and a half two years i think it's like three two or three years two or three years Okay. yeah and before max comes back i think rachel's been missing for six months at that point oh, so shit. It, let's say it's if it's two years, then I guess they have a year and a half of being friends. Then Rachel's gone, and then six months later, Max comes back. Mm-hmm. If it's three years, though, then I guess it's two and a half, and then missing half. Okay. Yeah, so I was and wondering about that. Like, how long do they end up being friends before she disappears? Because that would make her disappearing way worse if she's if they're friends for like you know, two years or something. But also, I wonder why. I'm sure we'll get some of this, these questions answered in the next episode, but it takes them a long time to leave then. Yeah. If they're friends for two and a half years and they're still in Arcadia Bay, I wonder what happened. I'm sure we'll find out some of that next episode. But, yeah, I was... I guess it's hard for you to answer that question if you, if you kind of know the answer. Yeah. I, yeah. I that That is something. And... I don't know. There's some answers in the next episode. Cool. But... Also, some not. I guess I would say, but yeah, it does kind of make you wonder that, like, why? Because they were gonna go tonight during this yeah, episode, seriously. like, yeah. and and if Rachel would have played it cool and not freaked out, like, if she would have just been like, "I'm gonna just shut up," mm-hmm. if they would have made it through that dinner, they probably would be gone that yep. night, you know. But now she found out some but info. Then, yeah, yeah, instead she found out info and had to dig into it with her family and. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's more story with that now instead yeah. of uh, just bolting. Yep. But if that wouldn't have happened, if they would have made it through that dinner, or if Chloe would have been able to avoid the dinner, mm-hmm. maybe Rachel could have just been sad or something and yeah. not engaged and then just left that. But so that is something that obviously they didn't get away because Chloe doesn't say we tried to run away mm-hmm. or go to California. She says we never got to go. Mm-hmm. So they obviously got stuck. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, which that that sucks. That's that's unfortunate because you really want to see him be able to run away. Yeah, part of me just it's tough because I really like it's really weird. I really like that Chloe and Max become friends again. That's really cool, and I think I like that more than her being friends with Rachel. I'm not sold on that. Probably sold on that, but whatever. But part of me just you know wonders or almost would like just I guess just leave and let Max come back and be friends with. What's his name? Friend, the guy. Uh, Warren. Yeah, Warren. Yeah, just be friends with Warren. He'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I kind of. Well, I guess we don't. I would wonder if they could make a life is strange, or before the storm two almost. Yeah. Because. This isn't a big spoiler alert, but whatever episode three is, it's still not like it's not like weeks oh, later sure. or something. It's or even years. It has to be years later. Right? Yeah. the The next episode, episode three, is only 
a couple, probably the next day or something like that. So yeah. for before the storm, we're really only in the first, I don't know, three to ten days probably. That they've of, known each other. Yeah, so yeah. like you could keep doing more Chloe and Rachel adventures probably if you wanted. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could make the game good or not, but if you could, it could be worth it. If not, maybe it's better to leave Arcadia Bay alone. But Yeah, it'd be hard. Well, this is totally side point, but it'd be nicer if they the next game they do make is just like uh, somewhere totally different. Yeah. Different town, same universe. Yeah, whatever. it seems like that's what Life is Strange 2 should be, because it'll just be away from mm -hmm. Arcadia Bay. If they wanted to make like a Before the Storm, but Max in Seattle, I'd probably play that. Yeah, I'd probably like would Like if too. they did like a three episode Max in Seattle, but that might just be too sad to play. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. might just be Max being sad and not having friends and not calling Chloe. <laughs> Which would be kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know if you could stretch that for three episodes. Maybe you'd just have to do a one episode thing. But yeah, I would play it for sure. Yep, Even if it was just really sad and you're just Max crying the whole time or something. Sometimes but it's good to feel sad though. Either. Right, it would probably be that. But yeah. I would definitely play it if it existed. Um, yeah, me too, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> My last thing... Uh, when we're with Frank, we see Puppy Papadou. That <laughs> yeah. was the best. That was great. He was like the cutest animated dog ever. <laughs> and uh, if they want to make a DLC that costs five bucks where you can play with Papadou and it's just Chloe and Papadou running around Arcadia Bay, <laughs> I will buy that. I'm interested. Uh, <laughs> How would they even do that? <laughs> I know. You mean? can't do that. It's not a real thing. But It could be. I would. I would totally play it because uh, that was the cutest animated dog. Uh, <laughs> it looked like a little brown marshmallow yeah <laughs> it was great <laughs> and and seeing frank with a puppy that was nice yeah. too like because when we met his dog he um, he was scary and i guess i'm glad we weren't evil people and threw the bones yeah, in the yeah. street that but, goes back to that yeah still never heard why people did that so if you have thoughts oh yeah throw the bone please tell us <laughs> yeah uh so yeah i don't know i'd do that just the side silly point but good episode this episode overall yeah. this episode's awesome really good. and really pretty good i'd say top to bottom like yeah as a full episode this one's really good and probably also maybe we'll have to rank this too but might be one of the best episodes of either game too a top three for sure yeah it's such a strong episode mm -hmm. so maybe we'll have to debate that too on once we wrap up i guess life is strange as a whole maybe we'll have to debate best scenes and best episodes or something yeah uh but hell yeah best this characters one, yeah best <laughs> character yeah whatever but yeah. this yeah this is definitely such a strong push uh, this, it, it was just really good. Lots of good stuff. Really interesting. Really fun. Mm -hmm. Even doing things like being Chloe in the junkyard and putting together the car. Like, it yeah. was fun. It didn't feel tedious. It was like, I want to do this because... I want to make, want to make it look good. Yeah, I want to make it be Chloe or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or, or oh, we didn't talk about this, but when she did, like, therapy with Rachel oh, in the yeah. truck and was laying down and sharing what's going on. Mm -hmm. it, that was nice. It, it, you know, there's just a lot of nice scenes in this game. And yeah. Yeah, this episode was really well done. So, yep. good job, Deck Nine. Really good. Uh, I guess that's all I have on the episode. Yeah. Do you have anything else? Nah, it's covered most of it. Cool. Uh, if you have other thoughts on uh, this, let us know. You can email us at thegreateststoryeverplayed at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thegreateststoryeverplayed or on Twitter at storyeverpod. Let us know what you think of this. Next time we'll wrap up before the storm, yeah. uh, the third episode. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Later. Later.